Welcome to the Museum of York County and this episode of Creature Features. My name is Adam Davis, one of the educators and interpreters here at the museum. And today's episode is going to be talking about an animal that's been living here in the Piedmont since the Ice Ages and appears in folklore from all over the world. Despite cultural boundaries, this animal always gets a very consistent portrayal. He always gets portrayed as something a little sneaky and a little bit clever. If you're up on your fairy tales, you might have read stories about Reynard always getting into trouble and finding clever ways out. If you like Japanese folklore, or if you just like anime, we know you've heard about the kitsune, shape-shifting spirits with long, beautiful tails. And if you're like me, you might have, might have fond memories of a certain animated version of Robin Hood. What do all of these stories have in common? They're all about foxes. Foxes have been living around people as long as people have been here, and they continue to adapt to the changes that we make to our cities and neighborhoods. Red foxes and gray foxes can both be found here in the Piedmont, but there are species of fox that live on every continent except Antarctica. We know them for their ability to get used to rapid changes in their habitats and environments. They have a lot in common with their canid cousins, but they still stand out a lot compared to wolves and dogs. What we have here is a wolf skull, a red fox skull, and a set of red fox tracks. If we take a look at both of these, we can see just how similar the wolf and the fox are. The wolf's obviously a lot bigger, but they have very similar teeth. They have those long snouts. They, have, they share a very good sense of smell. And just the general shape of their heads and their jaws are a lot alike. If you have a dog at home, you can even pet your dog and you feel that same crest on the back of their head. If you take your dog for a walk, take a look at, take a look at their tracks if they walk through the mud. You'll notice that same pattern. You'll see, their, they'll see, you'll see their paw pads. You'll see their claws digging into the ground. Those similarities are how we know that foxes, dogs, wolves, other canines like jackals and coyotes, they're all related. This is how we know they belong to the same family. But foxes have a lot of differences too. For example, pack hunting. Wolves are famous for hunting larger prey in packs, but most foxes are solitary or else they'll be in small family groups. One of the big reasons they don't need to rely on pack hunting is that they're actually omnivores, unlike most canids. Foxes will eat small mammals, birds, reptiles when they can get them, but they'll also eat invertebrates, eggs, even plants and fruit. Sound familiar? It should. They eat a lot of the same things that we eat, which is part of the reason why a lot of people see evidence of foxes rooting through their garden. Their hunting habits are also pretty unique among canines. Some people like to joke that foxes are running cat software on dog hardware. And when you watch them, it can be easy to say, see why. They'll bat things around, they'll leap, and they'll pounce just like a house cat will. Gray foxes, like this guy here, are even known to climb trees. And they're one of only two fox species in the world known to do so regularly. It's one of the big ways that gray foxes and red foxes differ. Incidentally, that climbing is one of the reasons historically why red foxes are so resilient here. When the English colonists started coming over, they saw the gray foxes climbing trees as bad hunting when they were trying to bring the sport of fox hunting to the colonies. So they brought over red foxes from England. Now, a lot of people know that these red foxes were introduced, but recent research has confirmed that there were native red foxes here already. So unlike many cases, they were not bringing an entirely new invasive species across the ocean. In places where foxes have been introduced invasively, however, like Australia, they can be very dangerous for native animals and ecosystems. Wait, do you hear that? Okay, what about that? Okay, what about this one? It's hard to believe those are all from the same animal, but those are all different vocalizations that foxes can and will regularly make. Foxes have a wide, wide range of noises and vocalizations they use to communicate. 
They use them to warn an intruder, use them to warn about an intruder. They use, the, they use different sounds to call their kits, to find each other in the dark, to find mates. Lots of different reasons. Almost as many reasons as humans have to communicate. And with that, I'm afraid I need to communicate that we're done with this episode of Creature Features. Be sure to join us next time. Keep an eye on our social media. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And we'll see you next time. Take care.